Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. This evening is Season 3, Episode 5, Play the Devil. And those of you in the family who join us weekly might notice a subtle change in our vampires. Let's meet the Camarilla of Los Angeles. Hello, my name is Amelia Rose Blair, and I'm playing Suzanne Rochelle, and I am the second to the Prince. My name is Brian Deckhart, and I'm Prince Vanavir Thomas. My name is Ivan Van Norman, and today I'll be playing Robert Garrick. Our special guests, Nora Ibrahim and Whitney Moore, will be joining us at dramatically appropriate moments. <laughs> Before we begin, we'd like to thank several generous sponsors. First, we'd like to thank the master craftspeople at Dogmite, who give us our beautiful dice boxes and our fantastic custom vampire storyteller screen. Good evening, screen. It's nice to be back with you again. We'd also like to thank uh, Level Up Dice, who have made this special episode possible. Level Up brings us luxury RPG gaming dice from the most sought after materials in the world, including wood, metal, and semi-precious stones. Very appropriate for the Camarilla, I think. Always pushing boundaries, always innovating, Level Up introduces players to the highest quality collectible dice, and the most cutting edge and creative designs. Follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Level Up Dice. And keep your eyes open for announcements very soon regarding their upcoming officially licensed line of dice made specially for Vampire the Masquerade, slated for release later this summer. Tonight, we look in on the latest act in a global blood opera that has been in performance for centuries. Since 1493, in the Convention of Thorns, the Camarilla has been the oldest and the strongest organizations of vampires in the world. But now, to protect itself against the threat of the Second Inquisition, and to defend itself against encroachment by the Anarchs, it has retreated into a maze of neo-feudal conspiracies. And as the eldest vampires begin to vanish, pulled away by a force they know only as the Beckoning, it is uncertain whether the ivory tower will restore its former strength and glory, or whether it will crack under the weight of its own decay. So, with that in mind, let's tell a vampire story. Thank you. 
Beverly Glen is a private gated community in central Los Angeles. It is one of the wealthiest and most exclusive neighborhoods on earth. There are a bare 600 residents in Beverly Glen and each of them lives in a mansion that is grandiose, luxurious, immense, and well protected. To live in Beverly Glen is to be among the most exclusive property owners in the world. It's in one of these mansions that we open our scene tonight. As a member of Clan Tremere arrives to report. I'll uh, slowly open the door, walk in. You are greeted immediately by a pair of dark-suited gentlemen who stop you, inform you that you are expected, and ask to see your hands. Nothing up my sleeve. They look at each other wordlessly. It seems to you that some sort of communication passes silently between them. Hmm. And without speaking, they beckon towards you in turn, leading you deeper into the mansion. I follow them, checking that I have all of my various accoutrements associated with me already. To say that the mansion is well appointed is to do it a disservice. Hmm. There are museums in various cities of the world that would give their eye teeth to possess the collection of art and hmm. antiquities that you see displayed so casually around you. Hmm. Not Paintings just old. by old masters, sculptures by new masters, hmm. and some interesting pieces that might possibly be called art if one were very generous. Anything that would be of particular interest, knowing that this is a kindred establishment. Mm. Wits and awareness. So for you, that is um, seven dice. Okay. And one of those dice is the red hunger die. And the rest are the Oh, the red dice. hunger die. How many onks? Looks like Six you've got seven. That's some um, rather a lot of success. Yes. Okay. <laughs> are you employing any supernatural means to aid you, no. or are you simply using your normal sight? I'm purely using my uh, cognizant abilities to associate that if there is anything that I might be interested in uh, looking upon farther down the road. Mm, if you're ever left to yourself. If I'm ever left to myself, particularly since I know people, kindred especially, collect old antiquities. They do. Yes. There are one or two tantalizing huh. pieces of stone, stone. tablet Excellent. displayed under glass that you wouldn't mind having a more careful look at, um, perhaps at a later time. There are some books uh, set aside on a side table situated between two beautiful antique bookends. Each bookend is shaped like a hand holding a globe. Mm. And the books are leather bound, their covers and bindings cracked with age, but the symbols on them mean something to you. Well, it's as tantalizing as it is to go and get a deeper look into it. I shouldn't keep the prince waiting, so. Uh, his, uh, his two servants do seem to be a trifle impatient with you. Well, I hopefully took this brisk or brief moment to look over what was around and I will briskly follow them into the library. That's where they lead you, into the, uh, deep into the interior. Hmm. Uh, most of the doors are closed and hmm. not open to your view. Okay. Mm-hmm. And in a few moments, they usher you into the library. They knock. Yes! They open the door and usher you in. 
So Garrick will walk in. He seems to be having a leather-bound notebook with him that's underneath an arm. And it will come right up. Bow. Mm. Sire. It is a pleasure that we should finally meet. You're late. I apologize. Traffic was miserable. <laughs> yes. Rochelle? It is customary to introduce yourself. My apologies. I am Robert Garrick. I'll be speaking on the behalf of Mr. Strauss today. Unfortunately, he's away on vital Tremere business, and he has asked me to come in and speak with you about the matters regarding this minor uprising. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Garrick, pleased to have you with us. May I have a seat? Please sit. I'll sit. Well, I regret to inform you that unfortunately your two associates, the uh, Robert and Aurora, who you have sent out in order to deal with the anarch business, has unfortunately come back with uh, less than candid results. <laughs> Not only did they fail, but they have created quite a scene, of which now me and my rabbits are, well, helping the spin doctors assess right now. Failed? Well, they did not do what I assumed, sire, you asked them to go out and do, which is remove the Anarchs from this uh, immortal coil. When you say they made a scene, do you care to elaborate? Hmm. Well, from my understanding, they burnt down several nightclubs while the kindred were sleeping and have created, uh, well... Let's just say that the arson paperwork was not an easy piece to manage. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Insurance companies are now involved, and frankly, everyone's a bit embarrassed. Well, personally, I think that sounds wonderful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds wonderful. Yes. Mm. I do apologize, Sire, but my, uh, my hope with this issue is, is that we might take a time in order to look at them and maybe assess how vital it is to really it be. It is absolutely vital, mm. or, or I would not have asked it done in the first place. <clears throat> you know, I have no aversion to destruction or burning or mm. any means, let us say, required to perform a given task, uh, but it is a simple task, uh, a simple ask, and... Uh, simple ask? I do not enjoy repeating myself. Hmm. Uh, if I have been in some way unclear, uh, you please? So you say they failed, but instead they have burned down their club, the little club that they had, the Anarchs? Mm, this and, is my understanding, yes. And they went back, correct? Mm, beyond that, to be honest, we don't have a lot more information. Now, granted, if you are looking for the dirty details, you right. can ask your spies to get into it further. I'm merely bringing the information that Strauss and I have informed from this passage. And are you up to date? Mm, I am as, well, I'm as up to date as I am coming into you now. If there is more information since my traveling here, I'm not aware of it. Hmm. I was expecting more. Well, unfortunately, this is not something the Tremere often come into in order to, we are not assassins, we are not <laughs> cleanup duty, we are scholars, so I, uh, what is then your scholarly opinion of how to proceed given the circumstances? Uh, to be honest, sire, I fear that this minor uprising is something that could easily be squashed should we just starve them out, take time away from them. They are not doing anything other than just talking and squabbling and crying like babies. <laughs> Give them a few decades and it should be nothing more than a quiet chuckle. I like you. I like you, you more than I expected. Quiet, Shaco. 
I'm going to use my telepathy to see if he's hiding anything else. So you wish to reach out and touch his mind. Yes. Mm, interesting. So, Suzanne, you have a rather large pool of dice to be rolling here. Ooh. Yes, indeed. Uh, please count out nine black and one red. One, two. Nine regular vampire dice and one hunger die. And this may be a bit... Uh, now. Get, yes. No? Yes. Garrick, yes. you were saying? Uh, I was... Um, Part of my, as we discussed earlier, rituals of putting on makeup, combing hair, and doing the normal We talked about this. Bits. Would there be any rituals that I might be interested in performing that usually take time, such as, say, half an hour of meditation to perform? Mm. Let's do two things. First, let's, uh, let's make resistance to your mind being touched, unless when you feel the mental pressure, you wish to relent. Mm. Duly noted. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do I use nine, including the red one? Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect. <laughs> I know it's very exciting. Oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, how many onks do we have? I, I see the hunger die is blank. So blank. Fine there. So I have two regular onks, and then one, two, three with stars. Is that bad? No, that's uh, in fact excellent. Yep. And excellent. Uh, I'm going to make a rouse check for you to see if you get hungrier. Hmm. As you reach into yourself, gathering your mental strength, you hear a familiar voice in the back of your mind, the voice of hunger, Marie's voice. Hmm. That faint Austrian accent that you knew so well once upon a time and that now haunts your day's sleep, urging you, Mademoiselle, I thirst, I hunger, I need. Mm. Oh, tissue, give me time. You must not deny me, Mademoiselle. Give me time. I wait. Merci. When you feel the pressure on your mind, what do you do? Monsieur Garrick. I let her in. You allow it? I allow it. Okay, I'm and I make a point to allow it. I'm going to make a ritual check for you, Thank since you. you do not know the results. Mm -hmm. of the earlier casting. Her mind to your mind is like cool spring water mm -hmm. on a, an overheated summer night. It's calming. So, his thoughts to your thoughts. What do you seek to know? Is he lying? Is he holding anything back? He's holding back the fact that the scourges have been busier than he has indicated, that they have recently come back from an altercation with the Anarchs, mm -hmm. and that they have retrieved prisoners. Yes. One is Sanchez. Hmm. who was, of course, one of your spin doctors. Garrick does not know why the scourges have taken Sanchez. The other prisoner does not have a name in Garrick's mind. You will have to inquire of the scourges, perhaps, or maybe wait until your new sheriff gets here. I'm so impatient. <laughs> now you know what I know. Merci beaucoup. If I you keep wish, no secrets from you may ask two more questions of Mr. Garrick about anything that he might be thinking about. Mm. No. Yes. You spoke of the black rabbits. I did. So Garrick, the black rabbits, when she asks that question, what comes into your consciousness? What I do you think about? 
think of all the various storefronts, hangouts that stage magicians like to frequent and participate in, but also the back parlor uh, tarot readers, the um, crystal ball divinations, and the various areas where we either recruit, gather mostly false and bad information, mm -hmm. but on occasion tantalizing little bits of information that could lead to a trajectory of Tremere interests. And do you take any of that magic seriously? I take that magic as serious as a man who has converted from atheism to agnosticism. Mm. Mm. So there is doubt in your mind? Always doubt. I lived most of my mortal life in doubt, but I had also been shown that there are impossibilities that can be made possible, and this is the truth of what Strauss and I continually work on. My rabbit's the same way that your spies and other council members who are moving things around in L.A. We do what we can in order to serve the Camarilla, which is, of course, our duty. Mm. At the same time, we are always working to rebuild what has fallen. Our great library of Alexandria has been burnt to the ground and we need to restock the books. That we must. Suzanne, you may ask one more question in his mind if you wish. Mm. I want to know more in depth how you would deal with the Anarchs. What's the first thing you think of? when she asks you that question. What's the picture in your consciousness? The picture in my consciousness is that of sitting by a fine, warm fire, sipping a fine vintage of, well, delicious blood, and sitting and letting them go and fight with fire and brimstone and glass and silver. And I sit there and this image of me reading a book while sirens and terrible things are happening outside, and I don't give a damn. Hmm. What do you make of this guest? I like him, but I don't know if he has much to offer us. I do have one other vital piece of information. Do you? Yes, well, it is more important, I say, than the Anarchs, though as despicable as they are and the amount of damage they're doing to both the masquerade and to His Majesty's efforts, there has been a spike of supernatural activity that has aired on the Griffith Observatory level. And it is of note. A spike. Spike, yes. Of supernatural activity. Mm. This is of interest, of course. And you have much to share. Uh, how can you... Uh, Elaborate? Precisely. <laughs> well, right now we just know that we've pinpointed the origin of where such spike had happened. But in this circumstance is both my of my ghouls, as well as the rabbits themselves, are investigating as much as they can. What is that? It is, well, it is a simply a fetish of mine. A fetish? Yes. It's just for helping remember and feel the type of energies that come into when we Tremere absorb these supernatural materials. I assure you, your guards have checked it. There is no actual power in it. It is simply a anchor point that I hold on to. If it upsets your majesty, I'll happily put it away. Oh, it's quite beautiful. Thank you. Mm. It's my crystal. This uh, spike in supernatural activity, you've said it can be traced to a specific location right underneath the observatory in Griffith Park. Now, this is me basing this information off whatever knowledge that I can bring into it, but 
I have read and have understand that both the Mortals and Guru often refer to this energy as ley lines. And they are both, well, they can be of great power, but more often than not, they just lead to trouble. <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> well, I'm Did glad you your see? majesty thinks so. Ley lines. Yeah, well, in the most general sense of the term, it is the clashing of both hmm, predetermined or maybe predestined dimensions that collide together. It is a place of strong supernatural crevasses. So. You will, of course, continue your study. Absolutely. In this regard. So. Mm -hmm. Do you need any uh, resource or uh, access uh, that might uh, perhaps bring this part more of a stasis, uh, an understanding? Mm -hmm. While well, I appreciate your majesty's offer for both resources and manpower, I assure you that my black rabbits, as well as myself, I will be investigating this personally. I good, good, good. am both intrigued and, well, hmm. to be fair, it could be absolutely nothing. It Truth is not told. absolutely no, nothing. No, it is not. It is something. Hmm. It well. is something that could be a great asset, I think, to the Camarilla. The ley lines, if they should be a ley line, would be an unimaginable source of power and for it to be anything other than Camarilla control would absolutely be a disservice to Unacceptable. Unacceptable, mm, yeah. yes. Ley lines, ley lines. Do you know something of ley lines, are you? I... I've heard it. Tell me more. Well, the Garu like to use ley lines in order to travel from this realm to a supposed shadow or spirit realm in which they both conduct their ghastly business, but it is also a place in which it mirrors the direct dimension of our own. Now, I've never been to said shadow realm or anything like it, but ley lines have also been told to be places in which Worlds cross over in one form or another. So whether the power that we pull from it inadvertently, being under the curse of Cain, I think it is something that is, at this moment in time, completely outside of kindred control or knowledge, which makes it that much better. Yes. <laughs> that much more desirable to be able to go in and scoop it and taste mm. the sweet energy that this might happen, but, I jump ahead of myself. It may or may not be anything at what it is. All we know is that there was a large spike emanating coming from that point. And how much more time do you figure you might require for your investigation? Surely if this is an age-old entity, there must be much to learn. I don't know if it is an age-old entity, sire. It feels very recent. It feels like something that was created, torn. Well, we'll see. We'll get into it. Would I already have a team out there to investigate, or am I more kind of leading the card before the horse in this circumstance? This is one of those occasions in which you wish that Strauss would confide in you a little bit more freely. Got it. Perhaps the Keeper of Elysium has a team working on it, but if he does, I he hasn't told it. you. Of course, classic. Hmm. I assure you that both myself and Strauss are focusing on the situation. This is your essential task. From here on, you will spend no more time with other matters. You will require your assistance in study elsewhere, and your focus will be exclusively upon this center of activity. Uh, you will report back to us when you have more details, of mm. course, and should you require anything. Anything at all. Anything of the ivory tower, you will let us know. Thank you, sire. 
we'll be doing all of our due efforts to investigate what or what this could be. And in the meantime, if there's anything more that either myself or anyone else of Clan Tremere can aid you while I put my personal efforts onto this issue, then please let us know. We are of service. Thank you. It is at this point that there is another knock at the door. Yes? Yes? The door opens, and another guest is escorted in. Good evening. My name is Eve. I've been brought by my former mistress, Fiorenza, Prince Vannevar, it's a pleasure. Suzanne, you are as lovely as I've been told. Oh, you are too kind. I have heard much about you. I'm very glad to meet you. Likewise. You are not familiar with. Madame, I am Garrick of Clan Tremere. I have been informed of your existence, and I'm happy to meet you. It's a pleasure. Eve, I have two questions for you. One, are you armed? Tonight, I am not. Smart. The second question is, are you using any of your powers at this time? At this time, no. I understand that you have recently been embraced into Clan La Sombra. I have. While uh, Fiorenza has been my mistress for quite some time, mm. my service to her has ended, and through certain favors, I was brought back uh, to the Middle East to Mansoor. I don't know if how well you know each other, but he controls the knights in parts of North Africa and the Middle East. But it's come to my attention that something of great importance must be going on here if Fiorenza has pulled enough strings to have me come back. Yes. 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 <sighs> His Majesty is overwhelmed. I'm His Majesty very... is just fine, thank you. No uh, apologies. His Majesty is pleased to make your acquaintance. It is a great honor to have you here with us as we have gathered to discuss how we might manage, let us say, this anarchy, this... Uh, little baby revolution. The little baby revolution. <laughs> it is cute, the things that they think they are capable of, isn't it? Very cute, indeed. It is cute, yes. Suzanne, Vannevar, and Garrick. Now that Ebe has joined you and you have had a chance to observe her and look at each other. You cannot help but note that she casts no reflection in the mirror on the wall or in any of the polished surfaces throughout the room. There is something there. It is an imperfect shadow, a distortion, something uh, unfocused and ethereal but you see no sign of her features in those surfaces at all. Would I be familiar with this, if it is a ritual or something that's outside of normal kindred powers? Mm, let's try sense the unseen. That would give you the answer if you can do it. So for you, seven dice, six regular, one, I am the primogen of the mm -hmm. LA area and master of the occult. 
So, sounds good. Looks like two standard onks and then one two star onk for a total of five successes. And what's the red hunger die? I did not roll it. Blank. Okay. Preternatural sight is an incredible gift. Preternatural sight. You see things that are beyond the veil of the senses. Mm -hmm. Many clans, of course, possess it, but Tremere are highly accustomed to discerning blood sorcery whenever they use this gift. Mm. Whatever Eve is, she has no rituals, no wards, no blood sorcery or magic of any kind. This effect is completely new. Natural, perhaps. I mean, one hears about the La Sombra, but... Neither does she noted. have any magic on her person. Okay, duly noted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, with preternatural sight, you can, of course, observe other effects. Uh, there is nothing else in the room that is magical. Okay. Is there anything besides, obviously, the type of powers that both the prince and his second-in-command might have onto them. Uh, but I'm less worried about that now, since we seem to have established at least somewhat of a gelatinous bond. They're clean. Sounds good. As far as you can tell. If they're using any kind of innate power, it's not blood magic. I will continue to observe. Eeb, mm. you have a proclivity for the dark corners. You are <sighs> you you have you a, have a, a connection to these anarchs that we've spoken of. Former yes. connection, yes. What can you tell us, please? I can tell you that they have this pipe dream that I think they think they can achieve. And that might have some discrepancies. And I think that that, I think it all depends on who they have as their poster child. Poster child. Poster yes. child. A bruja. Perhaps you've met her? Never met. We have not had the pleasure, but I have heard of this baby bee. Yes. <laughs> baby bee. Baby bee. It seems as though this bruja thinks, for some reason, although she has barely been a kindred, she's of the opinion that she can stir people into action. Mm -hmm. It's always but the youngest that are the most presumptuous. It is. Millennials are very tiresome. Mm. But you. they have this social justice warrior in their coterie. Mm -hmm. And it's my opinion that if it weren't for Victor Temple raising her up and giving her a voice, Perhaps she wouldn't be as powerful and as influential. She is not powerful. That is correct, my friend. She is not influential. Mm -mm. No. She is a nuisance, you understand. Oh, I understand completely. Do you? I have been employed to clean up one mess after another regarding that coterie. So you have no allegiance to them. Yes, this Victor that you speak of, from what Strauss tells me, you have an old association with him. That's correct. However, my association 
stems from my duty to Fiorenza, and she is of the opinion, or I should say, that she still has some faith in Victor Temple after all, that he may be swayed to come to his senses. I think he ought to be swayed. I think he ought to come to his senses. Wouldn't you agree? I do. I think that a man like that, if we may call him a man and not some baby man, <laughs> some little baby man who is not unlike his baby bee, <laughs> he ought to be brought to his senses and sooner <laughs> rather than later, yes? <laughs> 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 Uh, why aren't you laughing, you fucking fool? Give me that. Give me that. Thank you. Kara. My per Is it, as you say, an ordinary glass ball, or is it something else? It could be something else. That is what I thought mm -hmm. you would say. It is mine, Crystal, though. Absolutely. Well, I cannot see. I would like to see Victor, this baby man. I would like to see this baby man in here. Can it be done? Sire, I think the Sombra has a valid point in that if you were to find a single breaking point that it might be in the one that is closest to this young neophyte mm. to find some kind of alternative. And as they say, I would much prefer a colder, more influential war yes, yes. than something of, course, of fire of course, and brimstone. Of course, of course. Of course, of course. Of course. Yes. Of course that is the way. We must. The Camarilla has done things this way and will continue to do things this way, thank you. For centuries. For centuries. Everything is just as it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and you are very kind. Thank you, my prince. To share with us what you have learned. Yes. Uh, if I may offer one more bit of helpful advice, if I may. Victor's coterie is very loyal and trustworthy within their own group. I think if we are to weaken Baby B's influence, it would happen if Victor would possibly lose loyalty to his little protege. And how would you propose doing something like this? Yes. Well, I think the one thing he cares about more than his coterie are his sons. Yes. One of whom, little baby B, seems to have a relationship with. <sighs> I think if something should happen, and it would appear at the hand of little Annabelle, that possibly Victor would lose his trust in her. Yes, uh, blood is thicker than water, as they say. Mm -hmm. Blood is thicker than water. Is there a world in which this supposed son of Victor and his sons you're presuming to set up some kind of situation in which Annabelle would take the fall for should such an event to occur. What type of event are you proposing? Something more drastic or something a, a lot more well, uh, transposing? I believe I'm in the company of very wise people. Yes. And Perhaps we could all think of a proper way. That would make everybody happy. What would make you happy, dear Ebe? Well, I do believe Victor can be swayed to come to his senses. Do you? I do. Hmm. 
And from what Fiorenzas tell, tells me, he would be of importance to you in Los Angeles were he to kiss the ring, as they say. Oh, for fuck's sake, kiss the ring. It's one simple thing to do. <laughs> it's a lot of It's a simple thing to do. It's a simple thing to do. I have kissed rings. She has kissed rings. You have kissed rings. It is a lot to presume that one, one kindred could be such a keystone for turning this whole thing around. Uh, are you basing this information that Victor might turn based off, off you and Forenza's assessment of him, or has he given you any indication? Well, you can dangle many shiny things in front of him. He's a man who likes power. I believe he tried to challenge you at some point. Mm. He did. Suzanne? I would like to use my telepathy again on her. Mm. Okay. To see if it's possible to read what's... So, the same die roll. It's rather a lot of dice. One, two, three. This time, though, there are two hunger dice in the pool. The substitutes for the black. Okay, I have three. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four. Perfect. Perfect, and uh, one for my hunger and one blank on hunger. Fantastic. Your hunger does not grow. You do not hear that insidious little oh, thank God. voice again. She does not trouble you at this time. Eve, you sense. Uh, pressure on your mind, uh, almost as though someone were touching you that you can't see. Do you wish to resist? Yes. So for you, Your composure. Four. Add your fortitude. Sorry, what am I adding to the four? Uh, add your dots in fortitude, so two more dice. Okay. Oh, that is one, two, four successes. Four successes. Almost, almost you can shut it out. You almost close the door of your mind against the intrusion, but not quite. Uh. Suzanne, what do you want to know? I want to know if you really have no connection personal to Victor and the Coterie. When she asks that question, what comes in to the forefront of your mind? What is the first thing that springs into your consciousness? Victor has always treated me fairly. The others I really don't care for. Jasper, I think, may have some potential, but for the cause. Mm. And while Victor has been kind, I do think that he can be a good resource for you, if he comes to his senses. What else would you like to know, Suzanne? You may ask two more questions if you wish. I would like to know if there is anything that Furianza might be hiding. When she asks that question in your mind, what springs into your consciousness? That I couldn't tell you. Hmm. Do you want to be part of the ivory tower? 
I have lived too long and worked too hard to get where I am to see a bunch of snot-nosed little SJW little bruja little wannabe vampires to take that all away from me. I believe in tradition and I believe in customs. And so if you would allow me, I'd be very honored. Eve. Your phone rings. Forgive me. It's her number. Would you mind if I took this? I answer. Eve, my girl. Are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Is Prince Vannevar with you? He is. His seneschal? Yes. His warlock? Hmm. <laughs> yes. I've had the pleasure of meeting him as well. Then put me on speakerphone. Sure. I put her on speakerphone. Good evening. Bonjour. We have never met. My name is Fiorenza Savona. Hmm. Prince Vannevar Thomas. Do I have the pleasure of addressing your majesty? Yes. Excellent. Seneschal Suzanne. Enchanté. And Keeper Strauss? No, my dear. This is Robert Garouk speaking on behalf of Mr. Strauss today. Ah. But I assure you we are in constant communication, and if there is... You can be trusted! What is it? Now, now. Patience is a virtue, Prince. <sighs> Though you seem to have forgotten it. Now then, to business. It was very courteous of you to receive my protege. Ebe has served me well for a hundred years. Mm. Oh. And through a very tedious process and series of obligations. She is as you see her now. I might have chosen otherwise myself, but such are the vagaries of our nights. Mm. I, if you'll permit us, I'll pull Suzanne to the side. I trust the warlock. Can you trust this Eb? I cannot make another offer for our sheriff and be refused a second time. I understand. There is too much at stake. I know. I know. Will she accept? I believe she will. I believe she's to be trusted. I... I used my telepathy. I think she's to be trusted. Uh, we return. While they're doing the sidebar, do you mind if I make a little bit of pleasantries just to not keep the silence so foreboding, so to speak? Century of service is not a small thing. What is it like to work with someone such as Ferenza? Eve, have you uh, muted the call, or can Fiorenza hear this? Oh, it's very much still on, so oh. I <laughs> oh, well. gesture with my eyes. Well, that's, uh, that's probably a little awkward for me, but I'll stick with it. It's been so. very pleasant. Mm. I, having had enough time in this place and having seen quite a more of your shadow than what it is, I want to say that I am not only intrigued, but 
fascinated by how you, Lysandra, commune with the shadows. And I would if be- that is the extent of your casual conversation, you may save it until after my call, Mr. Garrick. Absolutely. No disrespect. No more from you. <sighs> so, Eve is here. Eve. At my request yes. to serve your court. Yes. I have suggested several roles that she might yes. fulfill, but I think we all know the one that yes. would suit her best. You have two scourges of her clan. Yes. yes. Were she to accept your offer, she would then become their supervisors, and their indiscretions would fall upon her, and she would answer to you for them. Now, I realize you don't know what your little scalawags have been up to, but I'm sure Eve will consult with them and let you know soon enough. Mm. I should take it as a personal favor a great boon, Prince Vannevar, if you were to agree to my proposal. And I believe you know enough of me to know that my favors are not to be sniffed at. Of course. Eeb. Yes, Your Majesty. It is our distinguished honor to offer you in this place the position of my sheriff, whereby my will is your doing and your eyes and ears mine. If you would do us such an honor, I would be grateful on behalf of the entire Ivory Tower and this wonderful city of Los Angeles. Your Majesty, the honor is mine. And I bow, but only uh, break my eye contact very slightly. Excellent, well done. I can't bear long ceremonies. Very good. So, it is done and the bargain is struck. It is done. You may request repayment at a time and place of your choosing. Mm, Prince Vannevar, do I detect some consternation in your voice when you refer to your adopted domain, this city of angels? It is a beautiful city of angels. It is a dust bowl. It's a land of broken dreams and empty promises. Hmm. It is a land. <laughs> it is a land. Now, Mr. Garrick, you may speak. What do land. you think of it? I say it is a land of insightful, interesting, yet intriguing novelties. Spoken like a true warlock. <laughs> so, I shan't take up any more of your precious time. Eve, my girl. Yes, mistress. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. The call ends. Well, I think we should throw some sort of celebration. Good night. Mm. One Some last, celebration. If I may, one last thing. Regarding your scourges, as Fiorenza brought up, it's come to my attention that things need to be run a little bit more tightly regarding them. And perhaps that's where I could be of service. Now, when you mean tightly, exactly what are you referring to? I mean, I do things by order, and I do things without failing. I like that. And when I give orders, people listen. I like that. Instead of wandering around doing things as they please, 
I run a tight ship. I like you two the best. <laughs> These are my new favorites. We shall have a celebration. We will have a celebration. A party. That sounds lovely. Do you like parties? I don't think I've ever actually been able to participate as I am usually on duty. We will have a party for you and for you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Saya. I uh, am not worthy. <laughs> I'm the prince. <laughs> <laughs> you are worthy. <laughs> And you are worthy, and you are certainly worthy, and I am worthy because I am the prince. Now, if you could do me a huge favor and let everyone know in this fucking death trap city that I am the prince, and you are the sheriff, and you are the warlock, and you are the very, 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 very best. Yes. Yes. I'm so tired. I think perhaps we should um, we should have uh, some some food, perhaps. Some refreshment. Some refreshments, please. Mm. Yes. We get peckish at this time of day, <laughs> as I would imagine. Do you wish to go somewhere else in the mansion to break your fast, or do you prefer to have it brought to you? Bring it here. Bring it here. Bring it here. The servants are given their instructions. Is there, um, as refreshments are being brought in, is there anything in the room, since I'm trying not to make any kind of mm -hmm. eye contact, I could peruse for a moment? Couldn't imagine why. I know, I know, no. The books on the shelves are all of a mundane variety. Yeah. Whoever built this home and assembled the library did so with good taste, but without accent, access to your clan's particular resources. It's fine. There are no volumes here that intrigue you beyond the passing of yeah, ordinary doesn't. interest. Not, not much not to hope for, really. That's fair. I know. But let's return to your bauble for a moment. Am I... Uh feeling like this is maybe an opportunity to put on a small prestidigitation of which I could do a little bit of contact juggling and get him uh, intrigued by it again. As he holds it up, and Garrick, much to your surprise, the sphere changes from transparent to jet black. I, I use uh, my supernatural eyesight mm -hmm. in this. No rolls required. It is though, it is as though it is filled with ink mm. or darkness that billows out from its very center to fill it completely until it turns absolutely opaque in blackness. Garrick, it hasn't done this before. Hmm. This is new. What does that mean? Eeb. Roll seven dice, please. Six regular, one hunger. Uh, two successes. That's your power, but you're not doing it. I have never seen this before. This is new. I, um, it, we have did an understanding that I might have some idea of, I'm familiar with blood magic, but not La Sombra blood magic in particular, but I do remind me of one of the rituals that's in there that just gives me, uh, mm -hmm. having a hard time recalling it, I'm sorry. All right, you wanna give it a try? I would love that. I'm not gonna put it down. It hasn't burnt me yet or tingled. So. Eight dice. Yes. One of which is hunger. Oh, so seven and a hunger. Seven with a hunger die. Fuck. 
Three successes, but no, on the, nothing on the hunger. Three successes. Yes. Yeah. It's not magic. Hmm. Whatever it's, it is. It's not. It's not blood magic. It's. It's not blood sorcery at all. We are still safe. It's no magic coming in here, but. Uh, you do you know about this? It's nothing like I've ever seen. Well, nothing to do for it. I take it and I smash it on yes. the ground. Smash it on the ground. Chatters into hundreds of tiny glass shards and the darkness inside billows upward and becomes what could only be described as a living shadow. A long, etoliated figure of blackness that forms into limbs, arms, legs, and a head. Eve, this is one of yours. Who is this? Who are you? The shadow coalesces and becomes the form of a male figure with thick, dark hair, an athletic build, and a handsome face that hints at the Mediterranean. It is Rodrigo, mm. one of your two scourges. He's wearing an impeccably tailored dark gray suit, Italian, you think, and highly polished shoes, and a sardonic smile. Forgive me, forgive me, I couldn't resist. Huh. Greetings, cousin. Rodrigo, good evening. How are you? I'm doing... Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Your Majesty. Seneschal? I smack him across the face. He flinches. He wasn't expecting that. The sound of the report echoes through the library, and he looks, for the first time, a little afraid. Remember your place. Of course. Don't do that again. Your Majesty. I bare my fangs at him. I apologize. I merely wanted to greet our, our cousin with a little fanfare. Mm. Yeah at the expense of one of my more prized items. Thank you so much for that introduction. We'll get you another. Do you claim recompense? Do I claim recompense? Mm. Ooh, from someone like Rodrigo. Oh, do I think he could <laughs> afford something as unique as pure opaque Mayan crystal? Or is this like, you know, asking for a hundred dollar bill from a beggar? You have no idea. Uh, am I above that, though? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm into it. Let's do it. Hmm. Yes, I do claim recompense. You came in here with shadow magic against one of my items and purely against our will and in the presence of his majesty here. You gave us all a start. Freak me the fuck out, man. Overstepping so many boundaries. I don't claim so much as recompense against the actual item lost, but so much as the presumption of which you came into our space using unknown magic. Is it your will, Seneschal, that I should repay? Yes. And your majesty? Very well. I offer you one night of service. I shall be your guard, your guide, your guardian angel from one hour after sunset until one hour before the dawn on a night of your choosing. Very well. I swear it in the presence of his majesty in the Seneschal. Very well. It is agreed? It is agreed. And no more in the... No, it's fine. Good. I beg your pardon, Your Majesty, Seneschal, Mr. Garrick. Ebe. Is it just Ebe? To you. Or is it something Ebe? Oh. 
Why, yes. It's Sheriff Eve. See, I told them the position was filled, but they didn't believe us. Hmm. My sister will be pleased. I can't wait to introduce you. You get along famously with mm. her. I just know it. Well, I look forward to having some words with the both of you. Oh. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Your Majesty. What? Um. Victor Temple's nightclub is, well, one of them, destroyed. Cinders, smoking ashes. We um, <clears throat> didn't manage to um, hurt Victor Temple, really. I mean, a little, not, not, not much. We have other plans. Should we try again? Can we not just... What if we gave him a very, 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 very small, bad domain? And you could be a baron of a very, 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 very small, bad domain. Just a little bit. No. No, we cannot give them anything, darling. <sighs> This is all so fucking exhausting. Right. Are there many princes that have to explain themselves all the fucking time? I don't know, Your Majesty. I'm a little new to this camera if thing. We. If we. If we f find some way, let us. Will you please explain? If I cannot have this, <laughs> please, 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 genius, please his, tell them. His genius is just overwhelming sometimes. I completely understand, my darling. I think that you have very clear instructions, and I think that you will listen to her. And if you and her, she, they, whatever the fuck. Work together in a team. You run a tight ship. You have magic. You are the very best. If we let this Baron go on with his ridiculous claims, with his deliberate ignorance, uh, he jeopardizes more than just this court. He jeopardizes the entirety of the masquerade, you understand? If this power you speak of is accessible to us, we may not have to play such a long game anymore. We may not have to wait so patiently in the shadows, as you might suggest. It may be that we can rid ourselves with them by force. It may be that we can snuff them out. Rodrigo seems very enthused by this particular suggestion. It would come with a lot of risk. Yes, yes. Potentially exposing us. Yes. Into a grade line. The ley lines are unstable at best. What's a ley line? Mm. Oh, no. It's to be said for another time. Oh, that being said, you, Majesty, if I may. Please. Yib, if you have uh, your newly appointed position, working with now your old associates, supposedly you had mentioned that you're going to bring both authority and order into this matter, I recommend that this is about the right time to exercise that. Yes. There's always the Inquisition. At, at the same time, I think it would be best to weaken their influence and not go to such drastic measures as to put ourselves in danger. Yes, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes. Yes. Of course, as I have said the whole time. We must preserve the masquerade. The ivory tower will stand as it has stood for many, 
many years. If I may take this time in order to execute your plan with Victor, as you see fit, in order to break his will, so that we might keep our integrity and our tower in check. This is an ample opportunity in order to take those who have failed and hey. let them take an opportunity to do something that is less <laughs> orange, frankly. Go just. We did not fail. Hmm. We came back with prizes. With prizes? Tribute. You Such left it out. Yes. Your, your, <laughs> your bounty is both interesting and intriguing, but unless it literally takes these babbling idiots and brings them back to the ivory tower, unless there's something you're not saying, what are your prizes going to do to help the gorilla well, right now? First of all, my sister and I caught Sanchez, the traitor, the one who is going to sell you out to Victor Temple, who suggested that they form a little masquerade protection <laughs> agreement pact. Hmm. So, I mean, he's here, he's, he's, well, I mean, not here, but he's nearby. So. Mm -hmm. Whatever you would like done with Mr. Sanchez, we'd be happy to do. What was your original plan before you had come to present it to His Majesty today? Yes, what was well, your plan? We were rather hoping that Mr. Sanchez would put up more of a struggle. Hmm. But he was fairly easy to subdue. We took him at Victor Temple's nightclub in North Hollywood. Wasn't that difficult. You took him there at the nightclub. When On the premises, not in the club itself. So what I is his favorite thing to do? Sanchez? Do you think? I think Mr. Sanchez enjoys money. He enjoys money. You know, he's oh. got all that flashy gold jewelry and... Well, it shouldn't be difficult. Gold watches and... You know, he likes, uh, he likes luxury. Strip him of everything. Yes. Or fill him with gold. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's very, uh... You can buy anything, especially in Los Angeles. Fill him with gold. Fill him with gold! It's, uh, very Mesopotamian. <laughs> it's I, a good idea. By his loyalty. No. No, 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 no. I mean, fill him with gold. You want to literally fill him with fill gold? Fill him with gold. He loves money. He wants my money. So let's give him some money. It's going to require a lot of gold, but. We I can get it back gold. after we fill him with gold. Stuff him that. full of fucking gold. Right away. Your Majesty. Shouldn't we, shouldn't we, my darling, shouldn't we allow our newly appointed sheriff to fill him? Whatever, whatever. Whatever our sheriff sees is fit. Is fit. I will instead be the prince looking this way while our sheriff decides we should buy him. So would this be a good time to mention that we have another prize? Yes. 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 Somebody I think you'll want to see, cousin. He didn't come quietly or easily. Who is Caused it? a lot of trouble. I believe he goes by the name of Jasper. Who is Jasper? Jasper is a Nosferatu oh. in his coterie. Hmm. That one. I've heard the you name. brought us the Nosferatu. Yes. Yes, Your Majesty. It might be fun also for you. Nearby. I thought you might want to see him, boss. Yes. Yes, I would. If I may, Eb. He, 
he has done me the great dishonor which you have tonight rectified. He has denied me many times after killing our last sheriff. He is a danger not only to me, but to you as well. And this, I will permit you to decide. I should like to see him. I can take you to him and you can meet my sister. She'll was, like that. Was anyone else harmed? Harmed? Mm. Well, it was kind of a rough and tumble, but um, no, not really. Very well. What about De Sanchez? I mean, we can do the molten gold thing. It's Matthew. not as nearly as difficult as some of the stuff we used, I mean, um, If for. I may, it may be better if we can try to buy his allegiance. Someone who is so swayed by power and by money could easily be persuaded. How do you know he just won't, uh, Turn traitor again. Well, That's then we can kill him. With gold. Yes. We can kill him with gold. After he's taken a, sus a substantial amount of bribery pout away. Now, what is your desire in order to protect a traitor at this stage? <laughs> if I may be so bold. Yeah, why protect him? Well. Sedition. While killing somebody outright and quickly brings immediate satisfaction. Why not leverage? Why not use him as bait? Why not play a longer game and get who you really want out of him? I don't disagree with you, Majesty. She is making some sense here. That being said, giving him what he wants is giving him the end means to the goal. You're going to have to make a more persuasive carrot over the course of time if you want to truly buy his allegiance. Stripping him of what he loves and desires most and then giving it back to him in small amounts seems so much more interesting. I, I like do like how your bit. mind works. I say, give him a month on the streets, strip him of nothing, have nobody serve him anything, let him starve it out, let him feel the pains of hunger as he continues to wander through the streets and then make him an offer. But I fear, perhaps then, he might go back to the Anarchs. That is true. That is a possibility. Then. So I overheard some things. Um, you know, they don't really know everything that we can do. It was not difficult to eavesdrop. Hmm. They made him an offer of sanctuary, refuge. Join up, they said, and we'll protect you from the prince and his scourges, as if, as though there is any protection from us. No. He refused. He said, nope, I can't do it. Once you're in the tower, you're always in the tower. But uh, he did try to run. He suggested that they just look the other way and he'd leave town. Hmm. So... I guess my question is, what do you want the Anarchs to think we did with him? I couldn't believe they offered. I mean, that's very noble of them, for sure. It's very short-sighted. If they believe that he's run away, they think of him as a coward. Now they could either use that to strengthen themselves, or... I think that if we just kill him outright, it would just, in, it would just incite, them into, incite them into more. There's a way here. There has to be a way in order to both show him to be the coward, but then also keep him. This is what the Camarilla does. This is we put our people in the problem and we have them take care of it. Now, Sanchez has failed us in the sense that he has turned over his majesty, but if he is truly as assuaded as you say he can be with money, then 
There is no harm in giving it a shot, otherwise we will literally rip his throat out. And you should always keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. If he is in close proximity and on a tight leash, you have better control over him. Can we put some actual leash on him? A magical leash, perhaps. Perhaps there is some way we could let him out and... Pull him back. Well, Show can we do it? Words. Can you? Can you track him? This is not something I was planning on coming here to do, is walk dogs today, but if <laughs> that is what his majesty needs. Perhaps like a little spider that follows him along. Do I have any, obviously, in Clan Tremere, there is lots of people underneath Strauss and us. Can I put <laughs> a warlock on this? You personally don't possess the thing that your maj- His Majesty is hinting at, but yes, there are Tremere among the Black Rabbit coterie that do. That could do this, yeah. So yeah. I will, with your permission, I would like to offer one of my clan who is loyal to the tower in order to keep a strong eye and a tight leash upon our traitor here, and I say we let the chip ragged dog back into the rat hole. I think it's a lovely idea. Let's make an example of him. Let's make an example, and even better, if we can show these anarchs just how unconsciously cruel we can be, they'll be more willing to let him come into their fold. Hmm. And we can pull them out with cash. I will make a note. So... Where is my food? Cousin, we'll wait for you outside and take you to the prisoners whenever you are ready. I'll be there shortly. I'll, uh... Your Majesty, Seneschal, See you soon. Mm. Rodrigo excuses himself, and this time he uses the door. It is at this time that refreshments are brought. A selection from His Majesty's larder, fresh, willing, vital. Living blood is, of course, the very best living blood that's willing is superb. And there is a surfeit of entertainment to satiate even the most discerning palates. Is at this point, I think, that it is fitting we take a short break in our vampire story. Welcome back to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night, Season 3, Episode 5, Play the Devil. We return to the mansion. We return to the library and our Camarilla kindred. Now, Garrick, do I understand correctly that you have issued a summons to one of your Black Rabbit Coterie associates? I've I've, uh, ostensibly texted or Mm -hmm. sent out messages to a, uh, one of my more trusted Black Rabbits who is now taking that communication and finding the right person to go meet up, you know, not at our location, but a location close to, Mm -hmm. not to compromise the security of our current meetup. I'm going to assume that you do so in a way that you send the message without betraying any oh, this, we have, at this information point, that is key to is, safety. Yes, so the, uh, the, the best thing about the black rabbits and the amount of infiltration we have to do in some of the darker subcultures of Los Angeles is, is that we have our own thieves code, so to speak, that we use with our messages, but it's only shared between me and a select few. You receive a confirmation that uh, Mr. Reed 
will join later this evening and be prepared to cast the ritual mm -hmm. that you have suggested, which will enable you to track Sanchez magically. Great. Hmm. Hmm. And during this time, while we, just for my own personal edification, during this time when I excuse myself to go make this connection, do you mind if I uh, sneak a, another quick glance at those stone tablets? If the so when you have excused yourself to send the text, you want to check the tablets out? Yeah. I'm here. Why would I not? <laughs> Please make a roll. I'm going to make it um, intelligence and academics, which for you is eight dice. Eight dice. One of which is your hunger die. Absolutely. Hootenanny, hootenanny. Um, <laughs> looking at five successes. It's an interesting but, magical phrase. Hootenanny, hootenanny. <laughs> Golly, what a day. Uh, but my hunger dice is a s three successes and onk with two facts. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> the hunger die is an onk with stars, or fangs, rather. Right. Are there any other fanged or starred dice? There is one other, one that has uh, so, two stars. This is what we would call a messy critical. Whoop. You can't believe what your eyes are seeing in the glass case. This is nothing less than a stone tablet on which is inscribed the tiniest fragment of an ancient canite text known popularly as the Book of Nod. You believe, you believe it is from the Chronicle of Secrets chapter in the book that speaks of the time of thin blood. It is written in Latin, a language which you, of course, are well versed in. Absolutely. This is a treasure beyond price. It cannot possibly be left in the hands of anyone but the Tremere. And I will, in recognition of your messy critical, mm -hmm. make a bargain with you. You can either make a willpower roll, mm -hmm. and if you fail, mm -hmm. you're gonna smash that case mm -hmm. and take it. Mm -hmm. Or you can give in to your beast and let your hunger increase, thus risking difficult situation later this evening. The choice is yours. Smash and or accept the hunger. Well, once you're in the tower, you're in the tower. I'll have to let my hunger increase because smashing a very valuable item in the amongst of the prince's company right now is not going to bode well for me, no matter how, what title I hold as Primogen. So I'm going to accept the hunger. I'm going to accept the hunger. How fortunate that you have broken your fast on the Prince's generosity earlier this evening. Yes. You hear a voice whispering in the back of your mind. You know you want to. You could take them both. They're not so tough. Remember that time in Dorchester? You could creep up on them from behind, tiptoe, tiptoe. They couldn't stop you. Let's do it. Hmm. No, it was a yes. different, that was a no, different time. And I will come back for it later. There are better ways of doing this Coward. than straight Bloodshed. Coward. Mm. You can't deny me forever. Mm. I can for now. For now. The voice. And I proceed. My... Fades Mark away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe, maybe just mm, touch the glass. I touch it. Mm. I stroke it. It's right there. It's just, right there. It's a thin pane of glass separating you and the Book of Nod. Mm. So. You return to the room? I do. I, I think I've been gone long enough. This is uh, about as long of an excuse as I can take. Do I need to know anything before 
Garrick returns. Um, I'm going to sense the future. Premonition. Mm hmm. There's been a lot of new energy coming in, and I need to get any bit ahead as I can. You wish to do this generally so that you get a sense of what is in the air this evening, so to speak? Yes. Hmm. For you, that's eight dice. No hunger, though, since you have slaked your thirst completely on the former mortal. And we'll deal with the stains later. Okay. It's good to feel full. It's good to feel replete. Yes. <laughs> I have three regular mm -hmm. and one with the stars. Okay. Four. Hmm. The world around you fades. You are no longer in Los Angeles. You are no longer in America. You are in a familiar place, some place you have long missed. The palace and the nights when you were young, when you first became what you are now, before the crushing ennui of centuries had passed. Still young enough to appreciate the feeling of being new to the night. But there are no others here, no mortals, no kindred. You are alone. The empty palace is silent. No footfalls, no voices, no music, not even the song of birds or the chirp of night insects, nothing. Absolute silence. You are completely alone. There is nothing here to amuse you and nothing whatever to eat. And as you wander through the palace, you find your way to the famous Hall of Mirrors. It's such a joy to see them again. They have given you so much pleasure, both when you were alive and now, when you were alive only at night. You look forward to seeing yourself, to admiring yourself, to seeing yourself as you were. But it's not you staring out of the mirrors at all. It's just a shadow. It's just a distorted, disfigured, blackened shape. It looks nothing like you. And so you try another mirror, the same, and another. The same. And another. Still the same. Where are you, Suzanne Rochelle? You cannot see yourself. You don't find yourself. You're lost and alone. The vision fades and the library returns swimming into view. You are where you started, just as Garrick is returning from his errand. It is done. I'll have one of my associates join us shortly. Should be when Yib returns. Excellent. Very good. I am grateful for our meeting, Warlock. Thank you, Sire. I may. Hmm. You had mentioned earlier if there were any aids or resources that I might be able to use to investigate further. Of course. There was a item out in the lobby that had some markings that had referred potentially to the power that we were discussing. I'd like to be able to research it more if you, Majesty, would allow it. By all means. 
Bring it here. Bring it here. By all means, bring it here. Yes. I will go and fetch the tablet in question. So, you return to the case? I'm assuming it wouldn't be so easy. It's probably locked, or else I would have taken it without um, uh, so much notice, but mm. doing it formally at this time, do I find it's unlocked? It was unlocked all along. I... It's not even very big. It's <clears throat> the size of a sheet of paper. Roughly a third of it is broken gone, but two-thirds of it, roughly, are intact. I, uh, I will blame the hunger in this circumstance, <laughs> and uh, I will come and reverently, in its paper, <sighs> bring it and place it down. It is at this point that there is a knock on the library door, and your expected guest, you suspect, is here. Yes. Come in. The door opens. Suzanne, you look as beautiful as ever. Hi, Therese Vorman. Mr. Garrick, nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Venevar, you look well. Ah, and you as well, Therese. Therese, thank you for having me, as always. This artifact will wait. Thank you, sir. This is much more pressing business. What? I am pleased to report that business as usual. The Coterie suspects nothing. And uh, Baron Abrams is bleeding money. <laughs> as you all know, money is power, and so we have them right where they want, right where we want them. Right where we want them. I have not received such similar reports. Uh, are you sure? Uh, are you sh Are you sure that Am I sure that things are so well? Am I sure that my job is being done? Am I sure that the coterie has suspected nothing from me? Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I am sure that it is burning down as quickly as I estimated it would. What I'm not sure of is my place here, because you see, I am not your errand boy. No. You understand that, right? Therese, I'd like to remind you to please remember your place. Of course, of course, Suzanne, I'm sorry. I just, I have been sacrificing my own kindred to show my allegiance here. I have been running around. Your kindred are our kindred. You have been sacrificing our kindred. And it's not something I enjoy doing. The Malkavians already are dwindling. Our place in society is my, it's my job to keep it going. I don't appreciate having to do this and I don't appreciate having to run around fulfilling your petty, petty grievances. <clears throat> Therese. Once again, I will remind you to remember your place. Of course. You are a learned man. You could uh, perhaps draw a diagram of the court. You could literally show this Therese her place. Uh, Therese, now we've only just met, but from what my understanding is, is, is that you are unhappy currently with the position that has been instructed down upon you in order to bring information and or restrict information leading to this coitery. Is that correct? Yes, I think that you can tell that I am upset. Yes, correct. We I would are. like to be recognized for my efforts. How would you like to be recognized? How would you like to be recognized for your efforts? Well, I would like to make it official. I would like to be officially a part of the court. Instead of running around back and forth, I am positioning myself to be of great use, and I have shown that. You have. And we are very grateful for everything you do. Are you? We are. 
We are. We are grateful, of course, for the information you have provided us over this time. We are, of course, grateful for your... Uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice. Are you all right? I am fine, thank you. Is he all right? I am fine, it is fine. Prince is fine. Prince is fine. What we're more concerned with is how you are currently feeling as far as recompense at this point. If your desire to come into the court is something that is truly of your mind, then, I don't know, Sire, are you feeling like the results are warrant of rewards at this point? <coughs> Trust is very difficult for this court at our current juncture. As you understand, you are not effectively as trustworthy to those who trust you as... <sighs> what he is trying to say, I think, is we're not sure specifically if it is the right thing for you to officially become part of the mm. ivory tower, but instead to maintain your position in between where you have the most power to be in the middle, to learn things. I understand what's happening. Well, I understand it's because I am a Malkavian and I understand that you feel that you can't trust me and that is why I've gone out of my way to show you this, he's losing it. He is not losing I'm not losing, what is, is I'm not is losing it. Genius. I am having a moment. Mm. These are grand accusations that you're levering up against the prince at the moment. I am just trying to do my job. And I am trying to do mine. Well, if your beautiful wife has to answer my questions for you, are you? What is it about the court that so intrigues you that you feel it is necessary to become part of this council when you clearly have direct access to his majesty and all of the resources that comes with being in the court? What is it so that compels you to be in part of this? I want to be on the team of winners. I am a woman who has worked very, very hard to be where she is. Mm. You've, sorry, continue, please. And I would like to be recognized for my efforts in an official capacity. Mm. So it is the title that is more intriguing than the resources and the power that's involved. Correct. So we could make a new title? Yes. Like a um, errand boy I title? <laughs> Therese. <laughs> There's a gentle pressure in your mind. And then a whispered familiar voice that says, it's time, they're in position, it's ready. Hmm. Frankly, I'm surprised that you wouldn't see me as the asset that I am because you know that I can hear them. You know I understand what's going on with them at all times. We do, we do. Of course we understand. Well, you should also understand then that if you send a wolf out in sheep's clothing, don't be surprised if it returns the alpha. I'm going to use my telepathy. Hmm. I need to know what on, on the fuck is going on with this one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and make your roll. And then I will ask Therese. When the pressure comes on your mind from an unfamiliar source, do you allow it access to your thoughts? Absolutely not. You push back. All right, I have three successes. Yeah, seven dice for you, Therese, one of which is the hunger die. So, hunger dice, and then you get seven of these. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How many onks? Is that the 
sounds special because so okay. mm, looks like four successes. Mm -hmm. I can see it from here. Okay. Yeah, and then the hunger. Do you wish to spend a willpower trait to re-roll any of your failed dice? Okay, so you burn superficial willpower damage. Take up to three of the black dice and re-roll them. Three that were failures. <laughs> What's going on? I'm anxious. Well, it's that vision, that premonition. The shadows in the mirror. Two. Two more. Therese, do you want to burn willpower and re-roll any of your failed dice? <laughs> yes. Ugh. Okay, super battle willpower. of willpower. <laughs> <laughs> Use those dots. Any onks? Three. Three onks. Oh no, that was from your previous. Oh. So you just you still have six. Total of six. Yeah. It's so close. It's so close. You can feel the door opening, but she pushes back inexorably and slams the way shut. If you want to get into her head, you'll need more time and preparation. She's not going to let you in willingly. Now, Therese, you don't know where that intrusion came from, but let's make a roll for you that you shouldn't see. You've used the power enough on your own to know that someone has tried to read your mind. I think what His Majesty is attempting to say is that maybe something more appropriate as a master of spies, which would allow you both the position to be able to come in directly and report in, and yet still be acknowledged by the courts as an asset. So an, to the an errand. Suzanne? Don't I have some ability to uh, inspire awe? Yeah. For fuck's sake. Indeed you do. Is it do. not awful that you would be the master of spies? The prince has employed the supernatural power of presence to become the most magnetic and fascinating individual in the room. <laughs> he is Great. the center of attention, hmm. and he is the most interesting individual in this library. Hmm. It is not that you could not act against him if you chose, but it would require some effort. It is a gentle reminder, reminder of the sheer power he possesses should he care to wield it. You know I'm doing this for you for all of us. I like to play nice, but I don't have to. I think that I can be better used. And I think that it would send a strong statement were I to be made official. So you would like to let everyone on the other side know that you are now with us? When the time is correct. Perhaps a position of Permission for the Malkavian? I believe he agrees. So fortunate that you're here to translate for us. Yes. I can read it. It's, he has a genius that only certain people can understand. Yes. It's clear that that's what's going on. It's his genius. <coughs> this is the thing now that we do. Great, so it's official. Do you accept this title? Do you like this title? Um, I'm not quite clear on what the title is. It will be good. Would you please explain to I her? I believe, I believe the prince has offered you a primogen position as the council of the head of the Malkavian clan inside of Los Angeles, despite your errant tone against him. 
I accept. Well, that's done then. Mm. <laughs> it's time for another note. Yes. Is it going well? Uh, Can I try one more time to use my telepathy? <laughs> you want to force your way in? Yes. How much do you care about finesse at this point? Finesse, you mean of her knowing that it's me? Mm hmm. I care. What? Yes. Spend another willpower. Okay. Go ahead and make the same roll again. Three? Uh, I will ask, no, the, uh, it's a total of eight. I'll ask uh, Therese the same question. When the knock at the mental door arrives, do you deny it? No. Putain. How many? Okay. One, two, three, with stars. Mm. She allows you entry into her thoughts, but this is not a pleasant place. Things are rigidly ordered, alarmingly so. Arranged very firmly in precise order. There are thoughts locked in mental boxes that you could not hope to penetrate without ruining her mind. Mm -hmm. Given time and access, it could certainly be done. But only her surface thoughts are open to you. You may ask one question. What do you want to know? Are you playing us? When she asked that question, what comes to your conscious thoughts. An image. What is that image? Suzanne ah. in her dress. You see yourself reflected as the first thing she thinks of when you inquire about her loyalty. You get a s sensation of esteem, mm. of regard, and curiosity but you do not see a conscious thought of betrayal. Well, I believe we have a celebration in order. We have a new primogen. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Prince. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Alcavian in the council. You should feel very proud. Not sure that I like that tone, but I accept no, your thanks. It comes with sincerity. Mm. I understand the difficulties you have had as a generational thing in the past, and I just want to say that you've overcome them. Thank you very much. I look forward to establishing a true bonded trust between us. Yes. So when would you like to make it official? Well, things are going to start falling into place very quickly, I believe. Is it, is it, um, is there a problem with your... He's okay, right? I'm yes, sorry. Uh, okay. I mean, we're more relaxed now. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, Malkavian, I'm, I'm conditioned just to be worried about certain signs. Don't worry. Okay. Oh, everything is good. Everything is good. Do I think everything is good right now? In what regard? In what regard? The amount of attention... I mean, I know. But the amount of attention that she's giving to him, am I connecting any dots here? right now about what Are is... Are you feeling like a third wheel, Garrick? I absolutely feel like a third wheel right now. I feel like I'm in a room of madness at this point, and I'd, I don't know if there's, well, actually I'm full on hunger right now. A ritual would be a very bad idea. I will so I'll, right what I'll point out is this. If you do cast a ritual... It takes time, and I have to use blood. It takes blood. time, and it is visible. And you'll have to make a rouse check, which could increase your hunger further. Should you fail the rouse check, mm -hmm. you get the hunger. Should the ritual roll, which includes a hunger die, come up as a messy critical or bestial failure, there is no telling what would happen. Duly noted. So it's a risk. And not a risk worth taking right now. So I'll bide my time. However, um, let's make, um, you are not well versed in psychology, however, Let's make a roll of 
Wits and Insight. Wits and Insight. Which for you is six. Six. Hunger Day? Thankfully, for six successes, but I did get a bestial. I believe it's what the skull is, yes. Got the skull. It's only an ordinary failure. As long as the entire roll is a success, you needn't fear, fear the, uh, the bestial failure. Duly noted. So six successes is fantastic. It's extraordinary. So, well, If you don't mind, I, I wrote something as they were talking, and that might be a little helpful or insightful if I may hand it to you. Let's see here. Why don't you go ahead and hand it to, um, to read? Or actually, why don't you just read it off to us? Ooh, secret. <laughs> Spill. Okay. It's actually not at all what I just said. It's a very different thing. It was an attempt for sleight of hand at the tablet while all this chaos is going down. Mm hmm. Do you want to tuck it away? I. <laughs> The hunger is still great, so mm, uh, I wasn't willing to smash the tablet, but uh, smash the case, but I am willing to try this, and I am an old stage magician. You so are. my sleight of hand is pretty great. It was your, your calling, your stock in trade at one time when you lived. It was. You have a rather a lot of dice to devote to this. I'm ready for it. So, please make a roll of nine dice. Great. Eight regular, one hunger. Sorry to take this moment. Um, mm. But uh, I appreciate everybody's patience. Can I spend the willpower to reroll? You may spend a re willpower to reroll up to three failed dice. I have two successes at the moment. Reroll it. Four successes. That is sufficient to pocket the fragment okay. and tuck it away. And then um, whether or not you have been noticed will become clear at a later time. I, I look forward to it, so. Was there something that you wanted to say? I, mostly I'm just appreciative of your concern for our prince at the moment. Mm -hmm. I uh, believe that if there was any insight that you could bring, it would be helpful, but I'm. Looks like you should eat something. I'm tired. Yes. Aren't we all I'm tired? so fucking. Tired. Mm. LA is a big place. It's so boring here. Therese, you receive a text message. It's from one of your associates in Santa Monica, and it reads, we found him. Should we hold him? I reply, stay right there. I'm so, so sorry to have to cut our meeting short. I have some very pressing issues to deal with. Of course. Thank you so much for your hospitality, and I look forward to working with you. I'm sure. We will Before do great things together. Before you rise, you receive another text from the same individual. It reads, X is very, very unwell. Please hurry. Right. Garrick? It's a pleasure. It's been real. Take care. Hey. They come. They go. And they take. And they go. <sighs> Do you get the feeling that everything is slowly turning upside down? Well. Do you get the feeling that where there was order, there is dis? Order, do you get the feeling that everything is moving so slowly? In the same way that a pyramid is one of the most strongest shapes in all of nature, such as an inverted pyramid is one of the weakest. Mm. And I believe that may have just turned the pyramid on its head. I don't like her. Me neither. Neither do I. But I but was I told once why. to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I just don't like having a 
unappreciative Primarch inside of this, sorry, in an appreciative primogen amongst the council. I don't believe Strauss will like it very much either, but at least we know that, and that is important. We can take that role with a grain of salt. It's Perhaps. kind of made up. Well, anyway. push her more, and she may continue to. I don't know, there's something about her that I haven't put my finger on yet. It's the, like it. it's the, it's all the. Yes, the poof. It's the poof. It's the poof. <laughs> mm. Mm. Too much poof. Oh. Too much. Mr. Garrick, you receive a text message. It is from your associate, Mr. Reed. It informs you that he is arriving in the company of Sheriff Eeb and the prisoner, Mr. Sanchez, as you requested. Ah, well, it seems like the newly appointed sheriff, uh, as well as one of my clan, has arrived. Uh, so at least we can attempt to get a little bit of hold upon the situation at this moment. Shall we? Shall we, indeed. Please. Do you wish to receive them here in the library, or would you prefer some other? Let us move from this. Yes. Let, let us go to, uh, to the living room. Mm, to the Grand Hall? The Grand Hall, yes. The Grand Hall is opulent in a way that perhaps a small palace from your memories would be. Mm -hmm. All gilt-edged and marble. Mirrors, crystal chandeliers, beautiful works of art. Truly impressive. Several moments later, the silent butlers usher in. Mr. Reed? Mr. Reed, Miss Ebe, Sheriff Ebe, and Mr. Sanchez. Mr. Sanchez appears much the worse for wear. He is missing his sport coat, his dress shirt is torn, his trousers dirty, his shoes scuffed, and he looks like he's taken several significant blows about the face, the neck, and his hands. His dark hair is tousled and unkempt, and his eyes are downcast. Next to him, Mr. Reed is attired not unlike Mr. Garrick, but in a more tweedy fashion. His uh, thin graying hair and little gold spectacles remind you of some sort of professor, hmm. or perhaps a, a researcher, a librarian. And they are accompanied by your new sheriff. Lovely to see all of you again. It looks like I've had my own leashes to tighten. Mm. Yeah. It appears as though some of the scourges took it upon themselves to behave pretty recklessly, and they are of the opinion that they no longer need to uphold the masquerade ah. uh, because they feel as though you will not punish them for it. Oh! I believe a re-education is in order, but they did manage to bring somebody with them, a prize. Small consolation, but Zyra will do our best to try to rein this in. What Wait. has become of uh, Rodrigo and Aurora at this stage? Well, they, they do have Jasper, as they said. Good. And Jasper is the Nosferatu. Yes. Got it. And uh, he has been staked, and it appears as though he may be in torpor. I. Oh, yes, uh, sir. Mr. Reed speaks. Uh, Your Majesty, uh, by, by your leave. He adjusts his spectacles. Um, definitely in torpor, Mr. Garrick. I know torpor when I see it, and definitely in torpor. Right, Reed. We're in torpor. He's 
He's been staked. Yeah, staked too. Uh, where? Yeah, through the heart, sir. I get that, Reed. No, it's the time for um, specifics is now. Sir? Sir, uh, yeah, Reed. When you say he's been staked and he's been placed in the torpor, is he outside? Where do oh, we? Oh, oh, I don't know where the the scourges uh, have him. I okay, so we have him. no idea currently. I where. saw him in the vehicle that they all arrived in. I see. You might ask the the, the sheriff. Um, uh, but um, I understand that you've required a service. Uh, if you will, Reed, we would very much appreciate the the blessings of one of your more well-known rituals today. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. to, a little deal to make with Mr. Sanchez here, and we are hoping to have you act a little bit of his insurance for us, if you'd be so willing. Sanchez raises his head and looks around the room at all of you. Well, this sucks. Hmm. It does. You're very astute. Now, here's the deal. I'm really? Sorry. Magic? Really? Yeah. Would you mind? Please, I fucking hate this guy. I don't want to talk. So here's the small short of it, Sanchez. <laughs> Is anybody else going to say it? What? What? You're crazy. I smack, <gasps> I smack him across the face. Remember your place. Now, Sanchez, there's an opportunity here, or there's a disadvantage here in how you choose to use either of those will determine what happens next. Thanks to our newly appointed sheriff, you have the option here to be able to continue to serve the Ivory Tower in a way. Great. More favors from the La Sombra clan. Those two maniacs you brought on, they don't give a crap about the masquerade. And they'll be dealt with accordingly. <sighs> but we're not talking about them right now, we're talking about you, is what we're talking about. I'm sure our new sheriff We'll deal with the masquerade breakers once the soonest opportunity arises. But right now... You know I'm right. You're like a little dog who has peed in the bed one too many times. What do we do with dogs who pee in beds? Oh, God. Put a leash on them. And put them outside. Now there is, like I said, an opportunity here to gain from it. Not only to change the sheets of said bed, if we're using the metaphor, but also get a little, couple of little treats for your time. Now, you've already mentioned, as per Miss Eve's uh, information. Can't, can't even look at her. She doesn't even have a reflection. Look, look at all these mirrors in here. It's like the fuck does that have to do with anything? There is an opportunity here in order to continue to do what you're doing because you didn't run to the Anarchs, and I will ask you- Of course you, I didn't run to the Anarchs. Tell me why. Before you keep rambling off again, now take your time to speak. Why did you not run off to the Anarchs? Because they're gonna lose. Yeah, and we're going to win. That's why you're here, and yet you still keep rambling your tongue like some young neophyte. Now are you going to listen, or are you going to keep talking? Good. Now, there's money to be gained here. There's opportunity to be gained here. But right now, Mr. Reed here is going to try to do something with you, and it will involve having an opportunity to look upon you while you're doing it. And we will be watching while you go and attend to these failing Anarchs, as you've talked about, and make the winning side win. And if you do anything other than that, well, then the leash and your head will be cut off. Now, I was hoping you would be much more amicable about this, and I'd be a lot more inclined to agree to this type of endeavor, but the more you keep rambling off, the more I am less inclined to take a more drastic La Sombra approach to this. Savvy? Never thought of you as a Sabbat lover, Garrick. Do whatever you're gonna do. Just get it over with. Mr. Reed? Yes, yes, uh, of course, Your Majesty, uh, Seneschal. Mm -hmm. With your permission? Mm hmm. Yes. So then, a leash it is. From his uh, tweed coat pocket, he pulls out a glass vial filled with some sort of dark crimson powder, uncorks it, pours a handful in his hand, 
The rich scent of blood fills the air. Now, none of you are above hunger three, so you're safe. But even so, <laughs> you, even having just fed, you can feel your fangs tingling. It smells wonderful. He raises it, steps back a pace, and blows the crimson particles through the air. They scintillate and twinkle in the light as they descend on Sanchez, who flinches as though he has been struck, closes his eyes, and when nothing else happens to him, he opens them warily. Mr. Reed steps close, utters a few phrases you think in Greek, perhaps, mm -hmm. and begins to walk around Mr. Sanchez first counterclockwise, and then after he has taken three complete turns around clockwise. And then finally, another phrase in Greek. And he stares carefully at Sanchez. Um, Mr. Garrick? Yes, Mr. Reed. Mm. Enough! I mean, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. I don't know why. I, I, I did everything right. I don't know why. I'm so... Oh. Uh, Mr. Mm, Reed. Had enough really of sorry. This. Maybe tomorrow night? Maybe... No. Um, maybe under a full moon? I, Reed, I don't Reed. Know what happened. Let the sheriff speak. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of you, traitor. And I uh, use arms of Araman <sighs> to create a tendril around his neck and pull it tight. From a shadow behind Ebe in the corner of the room. Now, are you referring to Mr. Sanchez or Mr. Reed? Mr. Sanchez, I can deal with Mr. Reed later. From a shadowed corner behind Ebe, a tendril, a rope, a whip of pure blackness, not unlike what you saw in the crystal globe, mm. emerges snakes over her shoulder and sinuously undulates through the air. And what do you do with this shadow tendril? I wrap it tightly around his neck. Sanchez looks at you in abject fear as Give the me coils one reason. surround his neck. Now, he can't breathe. He's a vampire, but... Give the implication is clear. Give me one reason why I shouldn't rip your head off right now, traitor. I told you. I told you, Garrick. They're all the same. And you let them in. Is that all? What do you want from me? Look. Yes, yes, I offered them a compromise. Yes, I offered to work with them to protect the masquerade, but what was I supposed to do? Your friends, your cousins are run amok, and he's, you know I'm right about him. I walk over to the fireplace. He's been getting worse since he There's got of course, here. two crested swords over the fireplace. I walk up to the Sanchez. I look him directly in the fucking eyes, and I ask him to kneel down in front of me. How tight do you make the tendril? I pull the tendril down so that he kneels. So you wrap it around his neck a third time, tighten the coil, and yank him to his knees. Any last words? He kneels before you, unwillingly. Your Majesty, you have to see it. You have to. You're not, you're not well. You're not. I don't have to roll any dice for this. The sword cleaves the air. Shadow tendril drops away. 
Do you dismiss it or do you keep it handy? It kind of slithers back a little. Maybe coils around your feet. Mm -hmm. And the head of Sanchez comes away from his neck. It's never a pretty sight when a kindred perishes. And Sanchez wasn't ancient, but he was no neonate either. Hmm. His body begins to molder and decay as all the decades that he has survived as an undead thing finally catch up to him. Hmm. The body crumbles, becomes a rough, thick ash with bits of hair and the grease of spent blood. The head is the last to go, but it too soon disintegrates. Re-education. Mr. Reed looks as though he may lose whatever dinner he has had. And by dinner, of course, we mean by tay. There's a Roomba in mm. the corner of the room. And I push it on as I put the sword back and let it sort of uh, vacuum up the Sanchez dust. Looks at you in mute horror as if to say, now what do I do? Mr. Reed, thank you for your services. We will meet again on Sunday and debrief. Mr. Reed goes to his knees first in front of Vannevar, both knees, and bows his head. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so sorry to have failed you, sire. I'm, 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 I'm simply, I don't know what happened. I, I beg your forgiveness. Magic is as it is with our blood magic, sometimes a not reliable item either. There was something going on, someone was protecting him, or there just wasn't enough. I'm sorry, if I knew the ritual myself, I would have performed it. It's very good, and uh, he grovels a little bit lower. And understood. He inches yeah. closer to your shoes. He turns to Suzanne and, and does the same. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. I give him a very warm smile and say, we appreciate everything you've done for us. You're, you're too generous, you're too kind. You're, you're really, really, I don't, I don't deserve I forgiveness. Re I reach up to Mr. Reed and I take him by his mm. arm and I help lift him up and goes, it's he's, all right, Reed. He's shaking like I'm going to I'm going to oh. put my arm around him and I'm going to lead him back out the door mm. so he doesn't make much more of a scene Mr. about it. Mr. Garrick, I, I honestly, I, I swear I did it right. Reed, I know. I don't know. I noticed and I looked into it, it was, potentially not going to happen, yeah. and that's fine. I was gonna fill him with gold. <laughs> he was going to get filled with gold anyway. So I walk him out to the door, <laughs> and I, uh, I at least uh, like give him, uh, and I think between the black rabbits, we maybe have cards that signify. We've talked about this, just mm -hmm. like the old magician societies that you once belonged to. Yes. And this is, this is it, when he was talking about favors being handed for each one, this is our way of basically giving the uh -huh. favor back. Uh -huh. so, yes. And I pat him out. Um, so, oh, should I, I also take said item that I slide a hand in. Do you want to try to slide it to hand to him? Um, but I'm, I'm going to message it with him as I put it back in and slide a hand to him and, and you know, uh, mail this to me. To me. So. Where do you want it to end up? in his pocket. And do you want anyone to see this bit of ledger domain? Uh, uh, Mr. Reed, mm -hmm. when Mr. Reed to see it? Mm, he could check his pockets later for it. So, ooh, but giving it to him if he doesn't know what it is, mm. that's okay. He won't, he won't face my wrath, so it'll be wrapped up. I'm going to whisper to him and slide a hand and be like, mail this to me and leave it. He um, gives you a a look that indicates it's not really registering with him. He's too shaken, but he nods in agreement since he's seen the price of disobedience firsthand. Yeah. Huh? What's, what's, going, what's going to happen? There's a new sheriff. It's a La Sombra. 
and we're having to deal. This is, by the way, outside of. Oh, uh, you stepped outside. The but room. I'm sorry, I didn't want to do any sleight of hand in front. Mm. Um, while I basically walking him out to the door, my point was to get him out of the door at the front stoop and then put him out. Do you think there is anything to what Mr. Sanchez said? Mr. Reed, the Tremere have lasted this long by always putting their money on the right horse. Something in the ivory tower is amiss. Of course. But the last thing we want is to lose our head when our head is the one filled with the knowledge of the kindred. Take this, and I put it in his pocket, and I want you to wrap it up, and I want you to put it in my office. Yes, in your office. Whether it is the prince, or another prince, or a prince after that, we will rebuild the pyramid. For house and clan. For house and clan. For house and clan. Good night, Mr. Garrick. Good night. Thank you. Mr. Reed. He sees himself out. Great. Do you feel better? I feel much better. You knew you would. And I like you a lot. I think that you have a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. And I am grateful. I am grateful that someone around here can do their job. <laughs> now, the Roomba, very efficient, if <laughs> comically grotesque. It has finished cleaning the area and returned to its station. The only thing remaining on the beautiful marble floor of the Grand Hall, the living room, as it were, uh, is sort of a waxy smear. Well, good news and bad news. Good news, the floor is clean. Bad news, we've lost our leverage against Victor. Well, maybe not. Hmm? There is a matter yet to take action to, and that is Jasper. Yes, how do we deal with the Nosferatu? I was not able to revive him to ask him any questions. You said he's in Torpor and been staked, and your associates, who we still need to talk about, have him in their car. Yes. So what do you propose we do? <sighs> we don't want to be too hasty. We don't want to fill anyone with gold. We don't want to be seen as Weak. unstable. Unstable. So we must concoct some trap. Trap. We need a trap. We need. Mm, an opportunity, let's say, for this coterie, this baby bee, this mm, Victor Temple, to show us what they've got, to pull out all the stops and put on some rescue. And when they do, we will be waiting. If that's what you wish. Do you see some other way? Some... Jas we must... Jasper will not turn. He is obviously incredibly loyal to his friends, his yes, coterie, yeah. and what you propose is a, as a trap. We... How do we do such a trap without breaking the masquerade? It must be... public, but not too public. It must be something that will show our might without. Uh, you have some idea. Ebe, <laughs> um. have you relinquished control over the arms of Araman, or do you maintain them? It's it's gone. It's vanished back into the shadow. Yes. So, at your next opportunity, when you do look behind her, the tendril is gone, but the patch of shadowed corner 
patch of shadow in the corner from which it came is distinctively larger. It's about person sized now, and it's very, very dark. It is not just shadow, it's, it's pure blackness. It dims the light in the room somewhat, as though struggling against the illumination itself. You will have to show me how you do that. You don't want it to be public, but not too public. What if you had a, a bunch of white knights as you put them as JWs? And what does every white knight require in order to feel righteous? They need a princess to save, don't they? It seems like you have your princess. I say let them come to us. Or wherever Jasper may be. We can make a show of this in the shadows. Don't know quite if the shadows is what I was getting at, but Hmm. you're the sheriff. And the shadow. And the shadow. If you are going to bait them, it would have to be in a public place that they may be familiar with. It would be my opinion. And somewhere we can watch over them. You are already in Griffith Park. Hmm. I am. The observatory offers fine view of the surrounding area, we could. Say, I don't know, the sign? Is it, is it too on the nose? The sign? The Hollywood sign. Oh. Oh. I like it. Now, what is important here is, is that the sign is often a tourist attraction, and night is when it is most popular. And let's not forget, it's lit. It is lit. But we could have it taken down for maintenance. Just make sure that one of our ghouls or someone of your best mind is on guard duty as security for that evening. Mm. And that will make it convincing. Now, We do run the risk of making this Jasper a martyr. Yes. Pinning him up against the sign like this. Nosferatu, no one will miss him. But his clan, who has remained fairly neutral, might be riled up and persuaded, coerced into joining the Anarchs. We must frame him. Frame him. Frame him. Who, at this point, has brought in, you said your two associates have captured Jasper, correct? Yes. Now, if your two associates came in, they are directly tied into La Sombra and the Camarilla in general. Yes. Is there a way that we can lead information with these Anarchs in order to show that it was not the La Sombra and the newly appointed sheriff that put them into place, but that they were recovered and placed in. What, what, if anything, do these Anarchs want? I really think that's too complicated. It is. Says Rodrigo, as he steps from the patch of shadow behind Ebe. <sighs> Excuse me for not knocking. We really can't in the... Uh, I beg your pardon, your majesty and, uh, and Seneschal. I couldn't help it over here. It's twice. It's twice. <laughs> ah, that's Remember. right. But uh, you, you, you know, I did forget. I, I did forget. I asked for no more sneaking in. You did. But you did. I did. But we need your help. Can I rip my head off too? Not yet. But you remember what we spoke about earlier. I do. Anyway, too complicated. Just, I mean, I think the sign is a brilliant idea. I mean, iconic, but let's just string him up. 
Stake him to the sign. And if he is a martyr, then let him be a martyr. I don't like it when he says it, but fine. Hmm. Wouldn't you want to inform his coterie, perhaps? What? Lead them to him? That way we don't have a martyr, we have our problem in our hands. In what way? The girl. Oh. That's pretty sick. I like it, I like it a lot. Sick, but, but, but great. Draw her out? Yes. Into our custody, or? Whatever you choose. I like it. So, you're gonna stick him up there, and you're gonna tell him. We'll leave a sign to the sign. <laughs> maybe Brilliant. you are better at this than I thought, cousin, and maybe I owe you an apology. I'll do it. You'll stick him up? Yes. By yourself? I think I should need a team with me. Well, we volunteer. I feel confident in being able to speak for my sister. Yes, well, you do need to make up for some reckless actions. It may be time for you to redeem yourself. It's agreed. Mm. Yes. All the shadows will go and make it so. Eid. I need you to look at me. Are you actually going to do this? Yes. You promise. You have my word. I will go and I will warn them and you will have an opportunity to have them all in your hands. It's good. I trust her. Well, I don't, but I don't trust anybody. So oh, fuck. nothing personal. Sure. <laughs> um, but I think it's a brilliant plan. So how long, <laughs> this is great. So we're gonna stick him up and then we're gonna tell him how long do we give them? Five minutes? Ten minutes? I mean, you're gonna do this like right before sunrise, right? Well, they should need a little time. Just enough. Twenty minutes. For them to panic and come to his aid. Oh. I like it. If they talk. don't, if they don't, he burns and everybody knows the Anarchs didn't rescue their own. If they try and they fail, they burn. And he burns. That's kind of the best outcome. Time what if they will actually, definitely be of the What if they actually do it? They won't. I. They will come for him. They'll come for him. Well, it makes the most amount of sense that if we're going to string up a trap, we better lay down some trip wires or some metaphorical minefields in order to make this more interesting. Or at least make it challenging. We don't just want to give them a level one outcome here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could uh, use. All right, fine, fine. Figure it out. We'll figure it out. I, I think. I think the sheriff and my sister and I can figure out something uh, appropriate as a contingency plan in case they pull off a miracle. Yes. Always assume the worst. We should be Correct. able to secure this area. So, I think we have welcome to Los Angeles. I'm impressed. This is going to be a lot more fun than I thought it was. Fun. Your yes. first appointment as sheriff. Let's hope you succeed with flourish. Do we do it tonight? Yes, for fuck's sake. Time is of the essence. <laughs> this is too good to be true. <laughs> okay. We build okay. a better mousetrap. That's a 
terrible game. What? Mousetrap. It's not a, it's a turn of phrase. I thought it was. I don't know, some sort of warlock thing. Who knows? Okay, I'll let Aurora know what's going down. We'll get it ready. Mm. Meet you there? Yes, I'll meet you there. Okay. Move quickly. Um, may I be excused, Your Majesty? Sure. Would you like to use the door? I mean, if I have Whatever, to. fuck it. This whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> he excuses himself and does, in fact, use the door this time. Mm -hmm. A patch of shadow behind Ebe proceeds into normalcy. I feel that we have had quite enough business for one day. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zyre, it has been a pleasure. Ah, likewise. Do you know when Strauss will be back? I need his help to plan a party. Uh, I will be checking in with Mr. Strauss here very soon, but uh, he did not specify when his urgent business would be fulfilled. Mm. But I do have regular check-ins with him, and I will let him know that a party planner is needed. What are your favorite colors? Black, Black. red, red. Classic. And yourself? Oh, I'm in no need of a party, but thank you. But you're going to have one. Ah, well then, purples and silvers, please. Excellent. Those are the four best colors. I like it. Huzzah. 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 <laughs> Huzzah. Yes, huzzah. Ah, oh, what a nice day we've all had together. Well, I have some reading that is vital. Yes. So, without Reed. further ado, uh, congratulations on your recent appointment. Thank you. Oh, Saya. You will keep us posted on your studies, of course. Absolutely, I will let you know how things happened in Griffith. Zanishes until the next time. Mm. And uh, I will excuse. You take your leave. Yep. Eve, do you excuse yourself? Yes, I, if you'll excuse me, there's work to be done. Of course. Indeed. Again, it's an honor and a Your privilege. Majesty. So, Camarilla yes. makes another move on the bloody chessboard elsewhere tonight in Los Angeles. The hunt is most definitely on. <laughs> We've been dancing around for a couple of nights, and so far, you've given us nothing. Maybe you're asking the wrong questions. <laughs> Polar fangs. <laughs> Hold still, Blank. This is gonna be fun. Yes, it will be. Protect me. Agent Stillwater, stand down. Stand down, that's an order. Take her down. Being underestimated has been very useful to me, especially recently. But the time for ignorance is over. It's time to be afraid. That's better. Mm. I think we're done here. But if you ever want to come over for dinner, you know where to find me. Come with me. We've got lots to chat about.
Greg, get your ass over here. We've got a problem. <laughs>